were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord will save us out of all our Yes. Yeah. 
Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. In the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. He's the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion. The city of the just left me. That's all right. I learned that verse when, back in high school. But thank God today, he'll come back to me. We honor God today and we don't want to be up here uh, forever. But God give us strength to be going to preach today to encourage the people of the Lord. So in the book of Numbers chapter 23. All right. And verse 19. That's going to be the first passage of scripture. Yes, Lord. And the second one will be in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. All right. Now you're at home. You're blessed. You can read it there on your screen. Here in the, in the auditorium, you have to use your Bibles. All right. <clears throat> So, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. All right. We will start there first. All right. Yes, ma'am. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? All right. And Second Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. I'm not against technology. All right. Um, uh, I stopped fighting it because I knew it was coming and we couldn't stop it. And I try to be technical, but I, I, I don't do too good of a job. But I love hearing pages rattle. All right. I just love hearing, it sounds so refreshing that, you know, I guess that's that nostalgia. 2 Peter 3, verses 1 through 11. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in the store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are th therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye be in all holy conversation and godliness? God is a promise keeper. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today for your words of affirmation. Thank you for your word that has the power to cleanse us, to change us, to strengthen and heal us. There is nothing like your word. Your word's so powerful and so true that Christ came and he is the word personified. Thank you, Jesus. So God, even now, empower us and anoint us to speak this, your word. Bind confusion and give me even now to rightly divide the word of truth. 
Thank you, God. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Thank you for your patience. God is a promise keeper. For the past several weeks, I've had the distinct pleasure of the Holy Ghost ministering to me. <laughs> like he made me his personal project. And I appreciate him so. And he's been dealing with me about my faith and trust in God. I know it was two weeks post uh, Pentecost. But the Holy Ghost is still relevant in my life today. He's still God in my life and he's still guiding me and again speaking to me. And, and he challenged me in my prayer life and my belief in him as I lead the Lord's people. On more than one occasion, the Bible says things like, the just shall live by faith. Or we walk by faith and not by sight. These words, they echo loud and clear in my mind as we prepare to build God a house. And I realize more and more I need him every day. Because doubt still come knocking at the door. Amen. And fear will still set in if you're lax, if you're not on guard. I think Jews has somehow certain men crept in unawares. Or the parable about the man that built or planted the vineyard and put a watchtower and built a fence around it, but somehow wild grapes still got up in there. That will creep into your mind. Think, and the Holy Ghost will help you drive it back out again. And just yesterday, while I was doing other things, the Spirit of God will talk with you. Until you're in service and out of service. Mm -hmm. If you're open to hear from him. Uh, late Bishop G.E. Passion said the Holy Ghost like, gives you uh, an antenna. And God's word goes out. And if you have a spirit to receive, you can receive what he's saying to you. And God will talk to you in church, out of church, in your car, in the, in the driveway. At the job, if you're open to receive from him. Amen, somebody. And so he, he reminded me, yes, I've made unto you some great promises. He said, but son, I am a promise keeper. Thank you, Jesus. If God has promised you anything, just shout, thank God for the promise. I remember vividly uh, my oldest daughter, and now I've been teasing, she, she getting old. She got children and got a house and a marriage of her own and a family. And uh, She was four years of age, and I took her to the doctor to get her last physical before kindergarten. And she was doing so well, and, and I said, oh, honey, you're doing so good, and, and I said, well, you know, when this is done, I'm going to treat you to something. She was, she was so happy with me. And she does not like needles. Even today, at, in, her older, in her older age, she don't like needles. And she said, Dad, no more shots. I said, done. I said, honey, no more shots. We all done. I promise you, no more shots. And I meant that when I said it. You know, I was, I was sincere. To my knowledge, shots we're done with. We ain't ready to go. And the nurse says, oh, Mr. Pruitt, I'm sorry. We didn't get her, uh, we didn't check her blood. We got to prick her finger 
to get to get the blood sample, whatever that thing was called. I said, oh no. She said, we, we got to do this. So I said, honey, we got one more uh, shot we got to do. Well, I, I tried, I didn't say shot, I said, we got one more thing we got to do. And she, and she looked at me. She knew what was coming. She goes, are they going to stick me? I go, honey, it's, it's, it's not going to hurt. And she looked at me, she says, but you promised. And when I saw them eyes, and the tears were up in their eyes, I felt so bad. I let them prick her. <laughs> but her, her disdain for me and her disappointment in me, as a parent, I felt like I had let her down, but I couldn't do anything about it because someone greater than me changed my promise. A few years later, some other daughters, I got a bunch of daughters, y'all. Some of them were singing today. And, 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 and uh, I promised them, I said, one day dad going to take y'all to Disney World. Uh, they got so excited. And I didn't know it would take me 15 years. <laughs> they were grown women. But I made them go to Disney World. And I told them, you're going to have fun or else. <laughs> they were adults, and it rained. And <laughs> Lord have mercy. And y'all had fun, didn't y'all? Yes, it is. I told you. And, and I, I can see it now with a smile on my face. But for years, that promise never left me. And I wanted to do it earlier. I really wanted to while they were young and, you know, could get on the kitty rides. By the time they, they could go on the real big stuff. But I wanted to. But there was something that prevented me from keeping my promise earlier. But thank God I serve somebody. As the text says today, God is not a man. And when God makes a promise, unlike man, he needs no help in keeping his promise. He ain't got to check with anybody or borrow money from anybody. God is God whether you believe in him or not. And so when God makes a promise, he can stand by his promise. I read somewhere where he said that when he could swear by anybody else greater than he was, he swore by himself. God is a promise keeper. Y'all know what a promise is. A statement that something will or will not be done. And we've all made promises. But I'm never, it never ceases to amaze me how people can be so easily swayed and converted into believing foolish conspiracies and heresies shaped in the image of a promise. Let me be <coughs> transparent today and, and give us some kind of knowledge. There is now a new heresy, a new conspiracy that the former president will be reinstated sometime in August. And folk are preparing for this nonsense. Lord have mercy. I, I'm, I'm going to make some of y'all mad, but that's okay. I'm candid to help de deliver you. Now, for that to happen, for that to happen, it would mean that our current Constitution would be wiped out totally. It's been standing for 200 plus years. You had to have a Constitutional Convention to rewrite the Constitution in two months. 
and they can't agree today on health care. Y'all, they can't agree they even give you a check or even to administer or approve reparations for black Americans. And you're going to have a, no, Lord have mercy. That's foolish. That's a foolish promise in which someone cannot deliver, yet somebody believes that nonsense. Amen. Amen. A few years ago, it's happened several times. People sold their land, sold their houses, and went and stood on a mountain waiting for Christ to return. Because someone said, I did some calculations. And he come back on so-and-so day. And people believe that foolishness. And when it didn't happen, he said, oh, I miscalculated. It should be this date. And the people that went and they met with him again on the mountain. And one man got mad. He spent thousands of dollars um, um, buying billboard space. And said, man, you broke your promise. God help us today. And the Bible says that no man knoweth. No man knoweth. Christ himself don't know. It's the best kept secret in all of mankind. In heaven above, no one knows but the Father. But you went and you got out your calculator. And you figured it out. That's a foolish promise. But somebody believed it. So, point one. Never put your countless in people. Put your trust in God. Folk make promises. But they can't keep them. If they do, God help them to keep the promise. Remember, as a child, Sister Marcucci, you did something bad. I can see her smiling behind that mask. She's smiling. <laughs> and your mom and your daddy went and got the belt. This, this was before the timeout era. We, 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 we got timeout now. And boy, if I was a child, I'd love to be living now. Then the timeout. But I came up in the other era. Before Oprah and Dr. Spock, and I, I get the beat down treatment. And it, it, it worked pretty good. I said, I twist, but you know, it still worked <laughs> pretty good. Oh, Jesus. Sweet Nicole Marcucci. So sweet, so innocent. And she got caught doing something bad. And her dad's, no, 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 her dad's soft. It, it was mom. Mom's like, Go, I'm going to whip you. Go get that belt. I'm going to whip you. Remember when the days when mama, he got to get you, get your own switch? Yeah. Now, the worst was, boy, go get me a switch. If it was me, I can make a little, little twig. I can make a little twig. Here, here you go, mama. But if, if it was my sister, I'd go get a limb. <laughs> because I'd get a whole tree. Mama, beat her, mama, beat her. Beat her, mama, beat her, beat her. They came back with a switch. You just switch this. You just cut the air. I said, Mama, I promise. Did y'all do this? Mama, I promise I will never do it again. She said, oh, you can do it again. <laughs> Mama had a memory bank. She could remember you did this uh, two weeks ago, and you did this then. And she I said, oh, Mama, stop it. Mama, stop it. I'm going to do it. No, you can do it again. I'm going to have to whip you. Because she knew I couldn't keep that, I couldn't keep that promise. <laughs> Amen. Promise keeper. And when you said you promised not, not do no more, you you did, did you mean it? I mean you were scared. What's this Moses? Did you mean it? You meant it, didn't you? But did, did you do it again? 
Yeah. And then when you had children, you remember when you were a child? Promise keeper. Folks stand before the preacher and witnesses. And they promise to love, cherish. Do they, do they still say honor? They, they say honor. No, no, they do. Honor. Obey. They don't say obey no more. <laughs> Cherish. Richer. Y'all know. Y'all forget. Y'all, 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 y'all For poor. Sickness. And in health. Wait, uh, we ain't done yet. Uh, um, and, and when did I um, see? Uh, uh, good and bad. There's some more stuff. That's it. Better or worse? Worse when he get laid off. Or when he gains weight. Or when his muscles move from his biceps to his midsection. <laughs> y'all, y'all laughing at me. And, and y'all know y'all know it's true. That's worse. <laughs> Better when she had the Coca-Cola shape. I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm going. I'm out there now. I'm going. That, that's better. But, but then, it ain't worse. She, she has some of your babies. So I said, stop. I'm going to keep on going. She has some of your babies. And she just expanded her territory. She widened her tent. I ain't seen worse. It's just a change. In the dynamics and gravity. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For worse. And I don't call that worse. But things change. That we cannot control. Help me, God, today. You didn't know when you stood before the preacher, he he was going to backslide. And cut a fool and start beating you up. And you meant that vow when you made it. You didn't know that she was going to turn evil on you and serve you grits without the bowl. Worse. And things changed that you could not control. My point is you make some promises you meant to keep. But things happen that you could not control. But thank God. God is a promise keeper. And he can control the conditions. Clap your hands real fast and shout glory to somebody. You contract, you're going to buy the car and make payments regularly. You didn't know they're going to lay you off your job. Help us, God. So point number two, two types of promises. There's an unconditional promise that God makes. And when God makes that promise to us, it don't matter what we do. Everything is on him. It's an unconditional promise. Like God told Abraham, you can be the father of many nations. That was unconditional. Abraham had to have faith in God and obey God, but God's word was out there. And he would not go back on his word. God told Israel when they left Egypt, I'm going to give you this land. And that was God's promise. It was unconditional. Thank you, Jesus. Unconditional promise. I found one in Matthew 16 and 18. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will prevail against it. An unconditional promise. That means when that was written, 
More than 2,000 years ago, God knew the pandemic would come down the line. And we had to reduce operations for 14, 15, 16 months. But the church is still standing. Not because of PPP loans. But God's word stands unchecked, unchallenged, and stronger than ever. If the church is built on Christ, it's going to stand. The devil can't tear it down. Pandemics can't bring it down. Laws can't bring it down. It's going to stand forever because God made that promise. So glory anybody today. Hey, and I find myself in the God's ark of safety in the church today. Then God has some conditional promises. Thank you, Jesus. He told us we would live Three score plus 10 years, that's 70. And then by reason of strength, you might get 80. But then he said, if you obey your mother and your father, he will add days. Hear me, young folk, he will add days. Hear me, old people with living parents, he will add days. My father's 86 years old. I still obey him. I still honor him. We have mothers in this church. I still honor them. I'm the pastor, but I still honor them. Thank you, Jesus. Because God will keep that promise. Shame on you when you put old people down. We just, we just respect them. Shame on you. It's going to catch up with you after a while. I know, I know, I know. For those having problems right now with your emotions, don't put your trust in the psychologist. I know they serve a purpose. But if your mind is troubled right now, God said that he'd keep you in perfect peace. Don't go buy a gun and kill people. Or go out and overdose on drugs. Or resort to violence. Or become an introvert and stay in the house and get out of the house. It ain't good for you. Come out the house and go for a walk. Thank you, Jesus. It'll mess your mind up and pick up a Bible and read a little bit. And God will keep your mind. Thank you, Jesus. I love reading Deuteronomy 28, the first 14 verses. I, 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 man, I love that. I love that passage. How God promised them obedience if they obeyed, I should say. He would bless them. Sometimes when I'm praying, little Taylor, I said, I said, Lord, you told me I'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. When I come and when I go, I'll be blessed. Through my loins will be blessed. It's so powerful. And those are, but those are conditional. But folks, stop reading there. But I pray you keep on reading. Because then the other part of that chapter is quite long. He tells what will happen if you disobey him. I'm going to send locals to eat up your crops. It's not going to rain in the former or the, I'm, I won't send the former and the latter rains. He talks about curses that will fall upon you if you disobey. Conditional promises. Let me speed on here. I'm going to lose some of y'all. Why don't we keep our promises? Number one, we change our minds. Or circumstances change beyond our control. Some things we can control. We can control. And we change those. We become impatient. We're short-sighted. We yield to our sinful flesh. Or, God forbid, we forget our promises. But God's not like us. God keeps his promise. I found some things in the Bible that tell us about promises. I read about a 
foolish promise. Y'all remember Brother Jephthah? He was a judge in Israel. And he was not well looked upon because his mother was a prostitute. They were paying him to be their judge. And, and his brothers didn't really like him. He was an underdog. But he stretched other imagination. So he says, God, if you give me a victory over my enemies, I, God, I promise you, when I get back home, the first thing, come out my door. I'll sacrifice it and give it unto you. He won the battle and came back home strutting. I mean, shoulders, back, and chest stuck out like he was somebody. Get to the house and outside runs his only, his only child, and she was his virgin daughter. He said, oh, Lord, not her, but he had made a promise. So be careful what you promise. Seek the Lord first. Then God made promises to people. He promised Abraham, I'm gonna, you can be the father of many nations. And through you, I'm going to bless the whole world. God kept that promise. He promised Moses, you're going to go into Egypt and get the fuck out of Egypt, and Pharaoh gonna, you're going to be a lord unto Pharaoh. Read, read, read your text. Before Moses left uh, Egypt, Pharaoh said, Moses, leave. If you leave, will you bless me too? God promised David, I'm establish the throne in your family forever. Because although you had some problems, you still honored me. And still humbled yourself. So David, even though he has some issues, God still honored his promise to David. And thank God when Christ came down through the generations, he came through the line of David. God promised Mary, Christ's mother, that she would birth the Savior of the world. And he would save the people from their sins. Martha. Y'all remember Martha and Mary? Now, Martha was the one that stayed behind in the kitchen cooking. And when Mary saw Christ coming, she left Martha and went out to visit and meet Jesus. When Christ got to the house, he, was, he, was, he came in and Martha was upset with Jesus. And so, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. She blamed Christ for her brother's death. They complain about the fact that Mary left her cooking the biscuits. And Christ said, Martha, Mary chose the better half. But she said, she said, Lord, my brother's dead. And Christ said, will you see your brother again? She said, yeah, he's not, but, he's, but I'm the God of the resurrection. And you will see your brother again. God made Martha a promise. He promised the disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But I'm coming back again to receive you unto myself. Uh -huh. Then maybe my favorite one, for all y'all who have titles and positions, I don't, I'm not mad at you. I'm proud of you. And y'all been serving in church for 25 years. And say, I'm the president of the Blue Chair Committee. I'm happy for you. You sing until the walls shake. You beat drums like you're beating drums. <laughs> I'm proud of you. But there was a thief that was on the cross. And he had no record of service. Far as I know, he never he didn't been in church. And I see from what, from what I read, he had no record of ever living for Jesus Christ. But only in his dying moment, he recognized that Christ was the soon coming king. 
He understood the fact that Jesus was the Son of God. And he repented with his actions. To the other thief, be quiet. We deserve what we're getting. This man is the just man. And turned and said, Master, when you go to the kingdom, remember me. And Christ made him a promise. This day you'll be with me in paradise. Give him an alternative ending. Thank God today. So let me know that although you may outwork me on the earth, if I have faith in God, I have a promise. I'll make it in the heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then God empowered some people. Catch this. To make promises on his behalf. I said God gave some people power to make promises on his behalf. Elijah promised Ahab. Because you introduce bear worship to God's people, it, it ain't going to be no more dew or no more rain until God says so. And God cut off Ahab's water supply. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua and the spies promised Rahab because you protected God's people. And believed in God. I know you're a woman in the red light district. You have a bad reputation. But because you believed in God. I'm going to make you this promise. Tie this red ribbon or this red rag above your windowsill. And when we come back. Because God knows we're coming back. Because God has given us this city. When we see that red in your window. We gonna save your whole family. Say yes, yes, Lord. And that red rag and Rahab's windowsill represents the power of Jesus' blood. I thank God today for the promise of redemption through Christ's blood. I thank God for the promise of eternal life. For Jesus Christ, I live. Say yes. And then David made a promise to Goliath. I know you are undefeated. I know you're nine foot tall. I know you, you've never been whooped before. You're unstoppable. But thank God, I serve Jehovah God. I serve the God of Israel. I serve the great I am. I declare before God, I'm going to whip you, knock you down, cut your head off. And David did not have a knife or a sword. All he had was five smooth stones. But what David had was the anointing from Samuel. Yes, Lord, way back when Samuel paid Jesse a visit. And anointed David to lead Israel. That anointing was still there. Friends of mine, maybe you have fallen, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is still there. Lift your hands. Say glory, glory, glory. God is a promise keeper. David approached Goliath. Yes, Lord. All he took and needed was one stone. Let me slow down. He had five stones. All that was required was one. That one stone hit Goliath upside the head, and he fell out. And David, based upon the promise of God, went out and to the enemy's own sword and cut off his head. Friends of mine, the weapons that are pointed towards you, thank God for his promise because God has enabled us by the power of the Holy Ghost to take the devil's weapons meant for us and use them 
on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and give him praise. Lift your voice and give him praise. I got to go. But we discussed promises that were foolish. We discussed promises that God made to certain people. We talked about God empowering people to make promises on his behalf. But I close with these suggestions because God made some promises that were universal to his people. Like God told us, he would never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. God promised he would strengthen us and uphold us. Yes, he did. He promised he will rescue us from every trap and protect us from deadly disease. Hallelujah. God promised he will go before us and guard our rear behind. Yes, Lord. He promised he will fight on our behalf. He promised his love won't fail you. He promised wisdom when you ask him. He promised his plans to prosper us and heal us. Yes, Lord. He promised he will meet some of your needs. He promised to meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. He promised to deliver us from all your trouble. Yes, Lord. He promised he would work out everything for your good. Say yes. Say yes. He promised to lead us, direct us. He promised to deliver us from all trouble and sin. He promised refuge and strength in the time of trouble. He promised us beauty for ashes. He promised to give us a crown of life. He promised to make us the head, not the tail. He promised rest. He promised his face will shine on us. He promised to keep his promises. He promised eternal life. He promised joy in his presence. He promised sweet sleep. Yes, he promised from his womb I will be blessed and holy. Hallelujah. He promised healing, power, victory, strength, Yes, yes, there's more, there's more in the book, but time is failing me, but thank God. Thank God. He's a promise keeper. I got the clothes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in the text today, Peter warned us about this day is here right now. People are scoffing at God's promises. They look at you even now. You crazy. Thank you, Jesus. Living holy. Hallelujah. At the house, they can't see you. Turn your camera off. Do what you want to do. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. As in Noah's day. God had said it was going to rain. They didn't believe Noah. That time was among us right now. How long has it been? He ain't came back yet. Where's in your time? The Bible even tells us, where's the promise of his coming? They're scoffing at us, living holy. Hallelujah. But thank God the benefits of holiness on this side of heaven. Thank God, living holy has benefits now and forever. Don't fool yourself. The day of the Lord is coming. He's coming, saints. I don't know when. Don't know when. Don't know where. But God is coming to rapture his church away soon. 
and very soon. He's coming as a thief in the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The trump of God going to sound. Yes. And the dead in Christ going to get up. Hallelujah. If I'm dead, don't you get in my way. When Jesus calls my name, I'm going to get up out the grave. The Holy Ghost has power to lift me from my sleep, and I shall be caught up. It's a promise. It's a promise. And we that are alive and remain, we're going back to. It's a promise, y'all. God is a promise keeper. I said, God is a promise keeper. I feel him right now. Some of us have been praying for loved ones for years. Don't give up. God promised to save our children and our children's children. And as many as are far off, hallelujah, if you say and your spouse is not, hold on to God's promise that he will save your spouse. Yes, Lord, if you're waiting on that anointing, believe God, seek him and his fullness. Yes, Lord, because, and I close, for God is not a man. That he should lie. Though the Son of Man, he will repent from a lie. That scripture, it came from Numbers chapter 23. Yes, Lord. Our uh, evil leader, name was Balak. He got mad at Israel. They were prospering, they were growing, they were getting fat. Hallelujah. And Balaam got mad. Or Balak, which one is it? Am I right? Balak got mad. So I'm tired of Israel. Hallelujah. They were slaves. And God brought them out. Rich. They're multiplying. Getting powerful. I don't like them. Right now, don't fool yourself. There's somebody don't like you in your big house. There's somebody don't like you in your happy marriage. There's somebody don't like you with your lovable children. There's somebody don't like you with your anointing. There's somebody don't like you in your business. There's somebody don't like you getting promoted. There's somebody don't like you building a church in a pandemic. But hold on. God promise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So Balak, I said, Balak went and got Balaam, a soother, a smooth operator. Hallelujah. Had a resume of delivering on his promise. Yes, Lord. So Balak propositioned, yes, Lord, and told Balaam, I'm going to give you a bunch of money. Yes, Lord. Houses and land. I'm going to pay you to do my bidding. Yes, Lord. He told him, go over there and curse God's people. Put a spell on them. Put a hoodoo on them. Yes, Lord. Sprinkle some tea leaves. Whatever you got to do. Hallelujah. Go to the tail woman. Go to Miss Cleo, whoever they are, and find somebody to work a magic on them. Get our dream of genie. Get bewitched. And everybody else you can find. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So Balaam made his way. He intended to obey Balak and get the payoff. He got there. He looked out over God's people and he tried to curse them. But God stepped in and twisted his mouth. God stepped in, redirected his purpose. God got in and changed his mind. And soon Balaam found himself blessing God's people, yes, yes, Balak got mad. Hallelujah. He said, Balaam, 
I paid you to curse him. And you betrayed me. You blessed him. Yes, Lord. And Balaam, he told him, what can I do? What can I say? God pronounced blessings over them. And what God did, I can't undo. What God promised, the devil cannot undo. What God spoke, he will deliver. Hallelujah. And so Balaam signed off with these words. God is not a man that he should lie. Though the son of man he should repent of a lie. What he said, he will do. God going to do it. If God says you're healed, lift your hands, give him praise, because you are healed right now. I am convinced. If God said you are blessed, lift your hands, open your mouth, and bless him right now. If God said he'll keep your mind, fill your mind, you are not going crazy. Don't give in to that report. Don't give in to tricks. Lift your hands and your voice and say, God, God is keeping my mind. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. But thank God, the promise God made me many, many, many years ago. I wasn't even pastoring. Had no desire to pastor. I enjoy serving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is free. When God blesses people, they're not seeking him to be blessed. They're, they're just serving. I know, I know this is not what y'all been used to hearing. Folk going looking to be blessed and, and go looking for stuff. You, 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 you need to watch that. David wasn't looking for the throne. He was keeping his daddy's sheep. Moses was on the backside of Gideon. I'm sorry, of, of Midian. He was looking to be crowned a leader. Even when God got mad at, at Israel and said, I'm going to kill them all, Moses. Start me a new nation out of your seed. Moses took God out of it. Uh-huh. Are y'all still out there? Folk that are, are pretentious and looking for promotion, you, you better watch it. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. I know they're going to cut me off of YouTube now. They banned the president for two years. They may ban me, but I, that's all right. I'll do it out on the street corner. Abraham wasn't looking to be the leader of, of, the, of the Jewish nation. He's working for his daddy, making idols. God called, are y'all there? And Mary was saying, God, make me pregnant so I can have your son. She was engaged, making wedding plans. And Jesus showed up. Are y'all still out there? When you serve humbly, God come looking for you. Because he knows when he establishes you, the glory will go back to him. You say, God did this. I'm minding my own business. And God said, I'm getting ready to elevate you. Ooh, and he said, I'm going to build you up. And the man go, God said, I'm going to build you up. And when, you get, when I build you up, people will say, look what God did for Pruitt. And now I'm walking in that promise. I don't always feel it. Hear me, I don't always feel it. Sometimes I get a little nervous. God, am I out here by myself? God said, I'm right here with you. Matter of fact, I've been here with you all the time. Son, where you been? Come on, catch up with me. God is a promise keeper. So there are some universal promises. And now I'm a promise I'm going to stop. 
But he made you an individual problem. Do you remember what it was? Don't tell me. The devil will talk, he'll talk you out of it. He'll frighten you out of it. He will send people to distract you. Like Sam Ballard and Tobias. And they'll get close to you. Hey, are you sure God told you this? Well, I would do that way if I were you. If I, if I, this is how I would do it. Matter of fact, you know, why don't you kind of, you know, don't say nothing. Lower your expectations. Because if you tell people and it don't happen, you're going to look foolish. Let me drink. And so when, when you hold it in, you, you, you're trying to really hedge your bet. Well, I'll, I'll keep it because if I say something, if it don't happen, I won't be embarrassed. God said, prove me. God said, prove me. God said, prove me. If I said it, I'll stand by it. God said, prove me and see what I won't do because I'm God. The mother folk you've been depending on, they, they need folk buy-in. Lord have mercy. Ooh, but thank God today. I thank God today he's kept his promise with me. If God made you a promise, stand with me if you will. We're going to pray. But God keeps you. If you can, write it down. Write it down exactly as he told you. Be specific with it. And prove him. If folk are around you that speak against your promise, shake them off. Part ways with them. They'll be all right, and you will too. Let, let, let them go bother somebody else. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you today for confirming in me. And I know when I leave the pulpit, before I get outside, Doubt going to come back again to try. Like the Bible says about the person that had the demon in them. And you cast them out. Christ said, be careful because that demon, he'll come back. If he finds that the house is clean, he'll go get seven partners and move back in again. But Holy Ghost, stand guard. Ooh, thank you. Stand guard. Over my faith even now. Stand God over my mind. You be the gatekeeper. That keep the evil stuff out. And the God stuff in my mind. Help me to walk and talk in the promise. You made unto me this day. And God you had this promise for me. I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you honor. I'm going to give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the promise that you will not deny. Thank you, God, today. In Christ, I pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you today. All right. You ain't repeating the business now? It don't matter, do it. It don't matter. Okay. I'm being corrected already. Thank you, Lord, for my dear wife back from Kenya. Amen. Looking beautiful as ever with this Kenyan cloud on. <laughs> <laughs> I promised her 33 plus years ago. Amen. I gave her the sun, the moon, and the mountains. <laughs> I fell short, but I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you.
thank you for joining us on today. Uh, we truly enjoyed you being a part of worship with us on today. And if you want to share with this uh, church a few little offering or your tithe, Amen. please not donate but and share your tithe of offerings with us. Now we see this so often, but it bears repeating. Yes. If you attend another church, yes. your tithe belong there. But your pastor won't mind if you pick up a little some buzz. He won't mind. You can tell Pastor Fruit to build the church. And I want to help sponsor that church because God made them a promise. Amen. Amen. So he God said, He told Abraham, I bless them that bless you and curse them that, that curse you. But y'all curse us, bless us. And God will be sure back again. Until next week. God bless you. We love you. Remember, God is a promise keeper. Yes, He is. Oh, yeah.